the thing about you is, I'm going to talk about your character, you never let the business go to your head. There have been some announcers, not given any names, but, you know, they start thinking that they're the rock stars, too, you know? Yeah. But you never let it go to your head. You've always been friendly. Your your demeanor has always been the same, and you've always kept an open door to whoever, whether it be students uh, wanting to learn about the business. I've been told that you, 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 you keep a door open for that. Keep fans coming over to you. People like myself who have been a fan. You've always been that same type of person. How have you been able to keep something like that when all the things that you've done and all the people that you've interviewed and the places you've gone around the world because of this industry and because of this business? Well, I don't know. We all we all have egos, but I I was always brought up to, to realize there's an employer and there's an employee. The employer says, here's what we'd like you to do, and as an employee, you do it. Um, and I, I was given some creative freedom. We talked about that earlier, but um, I, you know, I, I was always called the brown noser. While the others were rebels, I was seen as the brown noser. Well, a lot of those rebels are either unemployed or dead, as we speak. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 just, I just thought that was the way to do it. It never occurred to me to do it any other way. And I'm I'm not I'm not a big bruiser of a person, so I never felt that I could bully anybody, and, uh, and not that I ever wanted to, but I I just kind of I just followed the rules, and uh, I was always ha- always happy to help young people get into the business because I knew how hard it was for me to get the attention of people when I was asking questions about the business. So I thought, here I am, I've been successful. Somebody says to me. Can you help me out? Can you give me some advice? I thought, well, sure. I'll sit down and talk to you. Roger, Rick, and Marilyn, iconic trio. Uh, to me, I think that was really the height uh, throughout your career. When you were being known, that trio, not just in Toronto, but across the nation and really across North America, I mean, what were your thoughts of knowing that something gelled with the three of you guys that made it so iconic? Well, I, I never thought about it outside of the actual room. Um, Rick at the time was doing sports so he had an office where he would go and, and write his sports and he would only come into the control room once or twice an hour and one day when he came in and the three of us were sitting there I thought to myself this is one of those occasions where all three of us are here I'm going to say this is Roger, Rick and Marilyn and I said that and it stuck and and that kind of became the brand We didn't, we weren't the breakfast club or any of those corny names. We were Roger, Rick, and Marilyn. That's who we were. And I was always taught, if you're going to name something, name it what it is. Don't come up with a fancy name. Call it what it is. When I used to do the Sunday morning oldie show, we didn't have a name for it. It was an oldie show that was on Sunday morning. So it was the Sunday morning oldie show. <laughs> so so that's what we called it. But I, I never thought of it beyond beyond our, our own little room. I thought that's who we are. And if you're listening, you uh, Thank you for listening. This is who you're listening to. I've been in this business for a long time. You've been in this business for a long time. We all know that crazy things can happen when it comes to interviews, when it comes to places. What's one of the craziest things that you can tell me that has uh, happened to you while either being on the air, interviewing somebody, or just something happening and you're just going, oh, my goodness, what is going on here? I know talking to Mike Cooper many times, he had some crazy stories when he was – uh, on CFTR, what's one of yours? Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't really think in terms of those kinds of things. But I'll tell you that out of the people that we've interviewed, Gene Simmons and Reggie Jackson were very difficult interviews. <laughs> they were just uncooperative. Didn't want to be there. Gene Simmons was pushing his his product, whatever it happened to be at the time. Reggie Jackson was uh, holier than thou. Uh, but my two favorite interviews were Mick Jagger and Tony Bennett. Wow. Mick Jagger was, was very giving of his time, happy to talk to us. Um, Tony Bennett made me feel like I'd known him my entire life. Um, you mentioned Wolfman, Wolfman Jack earlier, and Wolfman used to come to 1050 Chum in the mid-70s once a month and do a live show and then record voice tracks for three other shows to get through the next three weeks before he would come back again. And it was my job at the time, because I was I was not on the air full time, I was working in programming. My job was to pick him up at the airport, get him settled at the hotel, 
make sure there were a lot of people around him in the studio when he was on the air and I just kind of babysit him. And he was a wonderful man. I, I got to know him quite well. And, uh, you know, for a period of two or three years, uh, I, I saw him regularly. Incredible. Uh, you're talking about legends. Everybody you just mentioned about legends. Um, do you think about that, though, too, now that, you know, the, the time is starting to wind down? You look back and you go, my God, I've interviewed this person, that person. You switch on the TV and you see this star and you're going, you know, yeah, we had a great conversation. Um, I, I do, but I do, but I take it all in stride. I mean, I, I met them all individually over a number of years. They're all just people. Um, I have fond memories of most of the people I met. Um, very pe- few people gave us a hard time, so I, it's just you know it, 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 it's it's cumulative. It, it didn't happen at once. It's happened over a long stretch of time, and, and I'm grateful for it. Why was this the time now to wind things down? Well, I'm 69. Um, I signed a contract two years ago. It was mutually agreed that this would be my last one. And um, social media is so prevalent now in broadcasting, and that's really not my thing. Um, Our target audience continues to be the same age as the rest of us grow older. So it just seemed to be the right time. And uh, I have no regrets. I'm I'm going out while we're, we're still doing well. And uh, I'm going to continue uh, to do stuff for Bell Media. I'm, I'm not leaving completely. That is a great thing. But are you ready for that last? Because as we speak, what is it? Uh, it's next week, isn't it? Next Wednesday, yeah. Next Wednesday. Yeah. Are you no, I'm, I'm a little. I'm very apprehensive about that because I, I don't. First of all, I don't know what to expect because they haven't kept me in the loop. <laughs> they, they're, they're doing it as a surprise and. Uh, I just hope I remember everybody who comes up on stage. I might have to say to Tom, our producer, who the hell is that person? (laughs) (laughs) One thing, though, and I don't want to keep you on too much longer, though, if there is anything that you want to say to anybody out there about the business, the fact that you've been able to do this, the fact that we've been able to share all these great memories with you, and the fact that you've helped create so many great memories for us, what would you like to say to the fans? Well, to people who have been listening, I, I want to say a big thank you. Um, I, I really appreciate it when, when people say you're, you're like part of the family. That, that's a wonderful compliment because that means there's been a real connection, and, and that is the most important thing. You have to have a connection with your audience. You're not just a voice. You're another person, and you have to have a connection. So when people say things like that and, you know, my mother listened to you, and I listen to you now, and my children are listening to you. We've all grown up with you. I mean, those are those are some of the highest compliments you can receive. So, um, just a, a big thank you. You know, times change, uh, life will go on, but uh, thanks for being there. One last question: Are you looking forward to being able to finally just sleep in? Yes, but as I said to other people. You know, I, I will sleep in past 4 o'clock, but I've never really minded getting up at 4 o'clock because I always enjoyed to where I was going. Yeah. I always enjoyed that I was on my way to some place I would I would be happy. So uh, it, it, was, it wasn't difficult to get up at 4 o'clock. I mean, sometimes it's harder to get up on a weekend because i got nowhere to go. <laughs> but um, but I, I think if you get up uh, if you get up at any time and you go to a job you don't like, that's that's got to be difficult. So I'm I'm grateful that I've been blessed with something that I like to do. Roger, I'm grateful for the fact that a you've given me time to talk uh, with this interview. B the fact that you've given me advice whenever we've run into each other. C that you did make the time for me. D what you've done on the air to help inspire people like myself to be part of radio to have this type of career. You know, to us we're all just blessed with everything you've done for us, with us, and being part of our family. So from myself and to everybody else, seriously, my friend, thank you for what you've done for 50 years. Well, thank you for the thank you for the kind words, Rudy. I'm, I'm glad that I've been part of your life, and uh, I know we'll see each other again somewhere. <laughs>